everybody, Josh RV Nerd from Bish's RV, and I got a question for you. Are you down with MPG? Yeah, you know me, because uh, we are this is one of the first times I think I've ever had a chance to really go through MPGs uh, in detail here. And if you've watched my channel before, this is a cousin to the North Trails that you might have seen me cover in the past. And actually, uh, Cruiser RV is a subsidiary of Heartland that makes those. So there is a family relationship there, but it's not a copy and paste. All they did was change the color on the nose kind of thing. They do have some shared, but some different DNA. So what kind of defines this? It looks really funny at first. One of the main things here is these MPGs have this sliding king bed. It's a 72 by 80 bed and it can slide side to side or you can lock it in the middle to walk around it. And a lot of people go, why is that there? It's mostly there on floor plans that have private bedrooms so that if you need a spot to actually stand and get dressed, you can slide the bed over and stand and get dressed. On a model like this, it's a little more open. It might be a little less useful for you, but I don't know, maybe you'll still find some kind of benefit to it. They are using Asdell below the fiberglass. These are normally solar ready but I've noticed that we've been bringing a lot of them in with the actual solar option from the factory the underbelly is enclosed and heated but what I'll tell you is like it's an extended season RV it's not some Arctic four seasons not like BS promise basically I, I almost lost my job the wrong thing almost slipped out of my mouth right there <laughs> This model right here is a very popular floor plan, but what I really like about this is they they built like the fridge into the slide, which oh, drastically name. opens up the floor plan uh, like a great deal. Um, the, the bathroom might be where some folks find it a bit of a deal breaker though, because it is a radius shower. There's not a lot of storage in there, but I've yet to find the one RV that does all the things. Overall, what these guys do is they come in lighter, they come in less money, with all the big features kind of tackled. And I'd like to hear from you what you think about these as we go. All right, so let's do our best Black Eyed Peas impression and let's get it started in here. That's a musical reference for those not in the know. Um, they used to use that marine woven kind of carpetless slide stuff. They've gone to a, a floor matching slide floor. You might notice kind of a little bit of a black shadow line right there. It looks like that might have curled up a little bit. But if you talk to anybody who's had one of those, if like you put any sort of weight on it or just let it get warm, it relaxes and then it just kind of lays back flat. So it's just, it's like, you know, if you, if you grab a t-shirt that has a couple little wrinkles on it, if you give it a little bit of time, the wrinkles tend to come out. It's sort of what I'm getting at here. Now they've done some interesting different things like this floor plan, like Cougar, Rockwood, Apex, Surveyor. I mean, just a whole laundry list of people make a layout like this. So what are the more... Uh, unique defining qualities on this one. One of the interesting things, they're using aluminum roof trusses. We're going to talk more about that outside. They are centralizing their air, thankfully. Most builders of this layout will, but there are a couple that do not. But the fact that they put a pantry and the fridge over here in the slide gives this thing a massive open feel, even though they didn't actually make it bigger. Now that's a trifold sleeper sofa by default over there. If you are more of a theater seat enthusiast, that is available. Um, a lot of manufacturers will standardize a hide a bed because it costs less than a theater seat so that a theater seat will always be an upgrade. They like to add dollars, not subtract. 72 by 80 king bed might be a big deal for some folks. One of the, this is a plus minus though. One of the downsides, they really build the bed base 70 inches wide. So, uh, you'll hear me say in some videos, like a cougar, you could trim the, the, the wood decking down under the bed and you could convert that into a queen. This one is just kind of how it is. Is Otherwise, it's, it's going to take some real doing to kind of shrink that down and you're always going to know that a little bit of work was done. We're going to come back to this though. What's interesting is that is, I'm not going to call it a hide-a-bed. I'm going to call it a glide-a-bed because that bed can actually slip slide sideways uh, a little bit if you're so inclined. Now, here's the view from the sofa. That ain't bad, especially when you consider you've got a couple decent uh, campsite windows here that uh, you know you have available for viewing. This is also another good angle to get to kind of see under the overhead cabinets where you can see things like uh, you know a couple power outlets up there. I want you to know that there are some outlets uh, you know in the uh, in the thing. Um, <laughs> you might notice too, it does have curtains uh, to kind of close off the, the front bed space. Now this is obviously an open concept. It's mostly a couples or solo model. Um, if you do have any sort of guests, uh, you know, you're going to be able to hear one another breathe at night, but at least you can't see one another breathe, I think is kind of the goal behind it. And I really like all the counter space and they left it one level 
A lot of times when manufacturers give us any sort of breakfast bar, they always end up elevating this thing and raising the roof on it. This one they just left alone. And I'm kind of here for it because if you don't care about the whole stools thing, all you're going to get is just a big counter space. But at least you're getting to see a stool sample. Thank you. Moving on from there. Um, <laughs> it's such a stupid joke. I love it. Anyway. They do not use the peekaboo I smell you bathroom door. That's kind of cool. But this is what I was saying over here. The slide starts with the refrigerator and the pantry. But look how they put, I'm, I mean, I'm almost going to call it like a CPAP cubby next to the hide bed which is awesome and useful for a lot of reasons. Obviously, if you're going to use it as a sleeper, it's nice to have something beside you. Does it have household outlets or is it USB only? I don't see household outlets. I only see USB plugs. Well, that's a handy little phone charge pocket. Whenever I'm on the couch, I got a phone addiction like anybody else. And to be fair, I'm mostly on my phone answering YouTube comments when I'm at home on personal time. And that's my own thing. The company doesn't make me do that. I just do that. Um, it just It's a thing that happens. But I like to have a phone charger next to me. Now, what's cool is you have a pantry here next to that 10 cubic foot 12 volt compressor fridge. And if we get all the way back here, you see that you have more storage yet. So one of the other things that I liked about this, I always kind of look for this in manufacturers. If we open that door, you see that's where the converter is located. And what's great about that, that means the converter is always located in a spot where, uh, let's say you're going down the road and a fuse fails. You can always get to it. It's not hidden and blocked behind a slide. Now that oven is also an air fryer, but understand, uh, you need like it pulls some juice, like the microwave, like the air conditioner, it pulls big juice to cook stuff in a hurry. So it's not like an off grid friendly kind of situation, especially when this RV really doesn't have a whole lot of in the way of like inverter prep allowances. Now, again, in this floor plan being more of an open concept, the, the, uh, the glide a bed, uh, slide a bed, whatever you want to call it is maybe not the, the the most functional thing, but they standardize their bed and front end on this. Again, on your MPGs with private bedrooms, that becomes really handy so you can actually have a place to stand and get dressed in the bedroom, which uh, if you've been in the bedroom of a lot of RVs, the, they get awful tight and you frankly don't have room to get dressed. And I literally know multiple people every season that have uh, upgraded and swapped out their RV for that literal fact right there. They got tired of having to take their clothes from the bedroom and walk all the way back to the bathroom just to put on a pair of pants without putting on a uh, free show for the neighbors. But, uh, you know, not all of us are so, uh, I guess, blessed with that freewheeling ability. Now, the bathroom, um, still ventless flooring, which is nice. You might have noticed it's ventless and carpetless, so very pet-friendly through the whole RV. I was pleasantly surprised with the space around that toilet. Like, you notice my little toilet selfie demo is going on a lot longer than normal here, but I, I it, it didn't suck. The one thing to, to flip that script, and again, I try to be fair in my video, something that does kind of suck, nothing really in the way of linen storage in this bathroom. So maybe that uh, second big pantry by the door, you might want to dedicate a chunk of that for towels so that you can grab a towel real quick, uh, you know, before you get in the shower. That's just kind of one of those little things. Not a ton of counter space in here, but it's a small camper. So, I mean, I can, it's got enough for a sink and my toothbrushes. I can get by with that. And it is a full medicine cabinet, not just a mirror on the wall. Um, over here, the uh, the headroom in this with that barreled ceiling is great, but it's a radius shower. So it's a bit of an elbow knocker, unless you face your belly, I guess, or your back, but uh, it works best in my experience with my belly facing those knobs down there. And then you get the, uh, the the corner to corner elbow space, which is very, very handy. But Lord help you, if you drop the, the body wash, it is not, like you gotta take your naked butt dripping out of the, uh, the shower to get to the body wash. Now, when you get a slide and you get a peninsula countertop like this, sometimes they get awful pushy. And I'm really curious about the road mode access on this one. And it's actually better than I was expecting because typically sofas don't stick out of the slide. Like a lot of dinettes will actually stick out of the slide a couple inches. It still leaves you a little bit of space to kind of tiptoe through here carefully because you are technically walking on the inside edge of a slide, which I recommend doing as little as humanly possible, by the way, just because the inside edge is no longer supported since it's not extended. But you could theoretically 
butt scoot boogie your way around this thing and get up to the bed at a travel stop if you had to. Now, the refrigerator is not blocked uh, whatsoever when you walk in the door. And the bathroom, uh, also very easily accessible. So overall, some pretty solid travel and stop access on this one. Now for the tone and going weights and measures on this, you know, it's about 5,300 pounds dry. It's under 30 feet. It's a chunk under 30 feet, actually. Um, and uh, it's, it's, it's not super heavy. It's not super big. It's not super intimidating. It is not something where you need the Grave Digger monster truck to tow this thing around. It's just not that scary. Something that is really cool, though, they have a very large front pass-through on these with big doors on both sides. So here's a couple interesting things. There's a little sticker over here that says solar ready. Now prep and ready are two different things. Prep means they put a plug on the roof and they ran some wires down here and that's all they did. Ready means they actually ran the wires, they actually installed a charge controller and they finished running the wires to the battery. Now there's an optional solar package that we happen to have equipped on this one. Uh, but keep in mind, it doesn't mean that they're gonna be on every single one of these. The battery disconnect is up high enough that I can give it a pass for not getting busted off by shifting cargo. And the other black box that you're looking at next to that motion light, that right there is actually a um, uh, tire pressure monitor, little prep mount, so you can just plug in the little tire link thing. I think I'm getting cyber stalked by some people watching me over here. I see you seeing me over there. <laughs> Anyway, well, I'll catch up with you, partner. Thank you. Um, the uh, awning on this thing is not too awful big. And just so you folks know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send your pictures to the FBI. <laughs> Have a great day. Thank you so much. Um, magnet holdbacks on the baggage doors, tinted windows, and obviously we're having fun. And if they mounted those speakers any higher, they would be on the frickin' roof, dude. <laughs> uh, again, trying to share... Just all the information I can, these are import tires. Some people feel a certain way about that. Here's a really cool thing, like my home store, where this RV comes from, right next door is Bell Tire. If for some, if, if you like everything in this RV except just the, the tires, we can fix that. That's no big deal. We can roll with that, <laughs> if you will. They are prepped and ready for a telescopic removable ladder on the back, if you notice a little mount there. Things like, so it's got backup camera prep. What if an RV doesn't? You can still put a backup camera on it. it. Frankly, it's not really any harder. There's just little conversion kits that'll make it work. A neat thing here, shared with its North Trail cousins, uh, is the four corner power stabilizer jacks. Also has that um, uh, heated enclosed underbelly. Uh, where they differ a little bit is uh, some of the construction. Now this is a five-sided aluminum structured product, but it's not a five-sided laminated product. So structure, let's start with the walls. Um, they are aluminum framed. They are laminated. The layer below the fiberglass is Asdell. The layer on the inside of the wall is Luon. Some folks feel a certain way about one or the other. If you don't know what Asdell is, it's a, it's a wood panel substitute. It's lighter weight and the material itself can't rot mold or mildew. Um, some folks, may, they, they, that gives them some peace of mind and some comfort. The floor on this um, is basically, it's all stick built for lack of a better way to say it. It is wood joist and it is 5 8 tongue and groove floor decking. Uh, they used to do a laminated floor and they quit doing that because sometimes they would develop some soft spots and they said, nah, we don't, we don't like that. We don't want none of that noise. So they got rid of that. I respect it. The roof is still aluminum uh, uh, structured. It still has aluminum roof bows basically, but it is still a wood walk-on decking, which gives it a, a very solid like snow load capability. So that's the general ins and outs of these right here. Now, one last little detail, uh, the uh, sewer outlets, or rather outlet, because good news, this is a single sewer outlet, so you're not gonna have to do the crawl of shame under a slide to try to get to the other hookup, because there isn't another one. Now, I can I talk? No, no, I can't. I specifically chose this to be the first of the MPGs that I brought out here. I've got three or four more coming, so you can get a feel for more members of the family, but I wanted to do this one because it is such a co common floor plan. So it makes it easier to be able to see the things that MPG does differently beyond just a special floor plan, because sometimes that can be confusing. And to help you with that, I'm gonna leave you a bunch of links in the video description, not only to check pricing and availability on these uh, across our nationwide network, but also some other brands who build this layout. And if you would, if you're willing, watch one or two of those, or if you're familiar with a few of those other brands, leave me some notes and let me know which one you would go with and why, because I see where they all bring something different to the table, but I'm kind of curious which one speaks the loudest to you.
So when you're ready, we're ready. And the next time, uh, I, I couldn't decide if I want to say until next time or whatever. I really can't talk, can I? I'm going to wrap this up. Take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone. Thank <laughs> you.